Okay, so you've received your brand new SRS A2. Uh, let's just go over some of the prep that you should really be doing before you take this out to game. Uh, it's going to be cleaning, general things that you should be doing. Before we start, now I do need to apologise for my mistreatment of the instruction book in the last video. As you can see, these things are a work of art and this one now has its own private place on the pillow. These are very well executed uh, books and I'm just going to leave that one here so we can respect the literature that comes with our rifle. So I'll take a cleaning rag first and what we want to do is just try and clear out this part here. So we're going to give it a good scrub. There's a lot of packing grease that goes into these, uh, protects the metal. You can use it with it being in there. It's not a crime, it's not going to damage the rifle. But I would always still give it a good clean out. Now you can uh, use your little pinky to get into here. Just be careful not to slice your finger um, on the edges of the rifle there. These can be quite sharp. Um, the other thing to do as well is take the piston out and we're going to give the cylinder a little clean down as well. So once that's clean, um, then we can start to look at reapplying the lube and the grease. Um, now I wouldn't use this without lubrication. You are going to damage your rifle and it's just going to make things worse. So now we take the piston out and just give the piston head a good clean as well. Uh, I'm using a fiber cloth here. It's like a microfiber cloth. It's, I think these are technically called waffle cloths, but they do the job very well for me. So now we've got this, I'm going to use the Abbey silicon grease. You can use the grease that comes with the rifle. It's perfectly fine for it. I just uh, have this to hand. So the first thing we're going to do here is going to get a general generous helping get it on that cylinder and just get it all over that black surface try to keep it away from the nozzle we don't want to put grease into the hop unit because if we get grease into the hop unit we're going to cause all sorts of problems with the BBs not getting the right amount of hop so once we've given that a good coat over the next thing I do is we're going to reach for our WD-40 PTFE dry loop as you can see here now don't use normal WD-40 just use the dry loop so what I'm doing here is again covering the nozzle I'm gonna give it a little spray and this is now going to be mixed in with the grease that we've put on the reason for this is just to thin it down slightly the grease can be quite gloopy and being an open bolt system it will attract dirt I mean you're gonna attract it whatever you do but this is gonna kind of lessen that effect and personally I feel makes it a little bit more viscous I think might be the, the term I'm guessing anyhow we we'll get some more grease and we'll put it inside the receiver again so we're just going to work our way back from the hop unit try not to get it near the hop again for reasons of not getting grease in your hop so again doing this we need to make sure that we keep our fingers clear of any sharp edges um, if you go perhaps about an inch, start an inch away from the hop unit and work your way back, um, and you can see we're going to go around the back as well. When you're cycling your piston, that will move all this lubrication up and down the channel and it's going to get to where we need it to be. This will stop it creating any metal flakes. This will, you know, if you're not pulling the, the bolt back properly, you should really be holding this right by the receiver, the bolt then it will lessen the chance of damage. Now what I tend to do again, as well as using the PCFE dry loop, spray away from the hop unit. And again, this is just to kind of make that grease a little bit more fluid and it'll improve the pull and the action and the feel. And then we're just uh, spreading it around, just cycle the bolt and just make sure that it's uh, getting everywhere it needs to go. Now what we need to do is just get a little bit of lubrication onto the piston head here and what this is going to do is when that piston is sliding through the bolt it's just going to give it uh, a better chance for a 100% air seal. These things have a 100% air seal, shall I say. You just need to look after them and maintain them. So now we're just going to 
take the bolt of the cylinder out and the other place to again lubricate is just in here we're going to take a little bit of grease not a lot literally just a, a tiny amount on the end of your finger put it in there you're not going to get all the way down but that's what the piston will do with the amount of lubrication you put in there that's going to move it all the way up and down that cylinder Now we're going to assemble the rifle, so here we have the spring and the spring guide and just going to get the rear butt pad. Again, I tend to put it straight in, hook it at the bottom, pull that trigger backwards to let all this feed in. Now you're going to need to push down pretty hard, especially on a new rifle, just so you can click it in and make sure that it's there. And now we're just going to cock the rifle and what this is going to do is I'll hold the trigger down and then just cycle that bolt backwards and forwards. This is to spread all that lubrication evenly around the actual housing and this will give us the best chance of a nice smooth action. Now just clean off a little bit of excess that you'll get from the top. I mean the, things, the goal of this is basically cleanliness is next to godliness on these rifles. Keep it clean, look after it and it will look after you.